who by false pretense and with intent to defraud any other person invites or otherwise induces any other person to visit Nigeria for any purpose connected with the intent of committing an offense under the Advanced Fee Fraud and Other Fraud Related Offenses Act 2006 is liable on conviction to imprisonment for a jail time not more than 20 years and not less than 7 years without the option of a fine. Hello and welcome to The Eagle, Nigeria's foremost anti-corruption program. My name is Aisha Mohammed. FCC will get you anywhere, anytime. On our lineup this evening, EFCC graduates additional 85 cadets from its academy. Also today, Bologna lawyer and chief executive officer by Katni Limited, Wale Babalakin, seeks to frustrate fresh EFCC charges against him and more. Please stay tuned. We will be back right after this break. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> I got a telephone call. Anytime I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Jehovah, my God. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey! Was you all contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs. On pipe on water. I right. embezzled the money at the fear chief. You are supposed to fear fear you a special man that you don't do of EMCC. I chose people who are doing with you to chop other people with money. EMCC. As soon as they capture them, threat to prison. Jail. 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 Ah! Are you there? Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. When other people are dead, die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EMCC, I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Lamuri, has charged 85 newly graduated cadets of the EFCC to imbibe the core values of the commission. Golden Argo is our guide. Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ibrahim Lamurde, has charged fresh cadets of the commission to imbibe its core values, which are integrity, courage, professionalism, leadership, and partnership. Lamurde stated this during the personal ceremony of the EFCC Detective Superintendent Cadet Court 6 and Detective Intermediate Cadet Course 3 at the EFCC Academy, Karu Abuja. According to Lamarde, the 85 cadets who had just completed a six-month basic law enforcement training received the best possible initiation into the community of law enforcement. He said the cadets, in the course of their training, received lectures from regulatory institutions such as the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, and the Pension Commission. From the intelligence and law enforcement community, Agencies like the Department of State Security Services, the National Intelligence Agency, the Nigerian Customs Service, and a host of others were on hand to share priceless field experiences and other forms of training with them. 
Lamorde, who reiterated the resolve of the Commission to continue to champion the cause of engendering a society free of all forms of economic and financial crimes, added that the EFCC Academy will stop at nothing in the pursuit of all round professionalism, even where the required facility or faculty is not immediately available. He said the quest for professionalism necessitated the arrangement with the Department of State Services to organize a firearms training and range classification exercise for the cadets at each service development center in Kaduna. He, however, told the cadets that working in the EFCC is not a bed of roses, adding that it comes with some challenges. Earlier in his address, the Commandant EFCC Academy, Ayo Olowonihi, urged the cadets not to think that their training had ended because the journey as law enforcement agents had just begun. He, however, reassured them of their safety in spite of the hazardous nature of the job. Also speaking, the Secretary to the Commission, Barista Emmanuel Adeboyega Aremo, charged the young officers to make the EFCC core values the guiding lights in their careers with the Commission. Golden Agu reporting for the Eagle. Now to court matters. Billionaire lawyer and chief executive of Baikatni Limited, Wale Babalakin, has approached a federal high court seeking to frustrate fresh EFCC charges against him, just as the EFCC has arraigned a former chief of staff to the FCT minister, Mohammed Yao Ogital, and one other on charges of criminal breach of trust obtaining by false pretense and abuse of office. Kamali Gebi tells us more on these stories. Billionaire lawyer and chief executive of Bicotney Limited, Wale Babalakin, has approached the Federal High Court Lagos for an ex parte order to stop the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, from arresting or prosecuting him for alleged corruption and money laundering. Justice Latif Lawala Kapo of a Lagos State High Court sitting in Ikeja had on February 23, 2015, discharged Babalakin, who along with Alex Oko, Stablini Vision Limited, by Courtney Limited and Renix Nigeria Limited was being prosecuted by the EFCC for an alleged 4.7 billion naira scam. But rather than appeal Justice Lawal Akapo's ruling, the EFCC had settled for fresh charges against Babalakin and his co-accused. This was filed at the Federal High Court Lagos on April 21, 2015. However, having got wind of the new development, Babalakin rushed to the Federal High Court on April 29, 2015 for a leave to grant him an order prohibiting the EFCC from arresting, detaining or arraigning him on the grounds that the Lagos High Court had already quashed the charges. In the ex parte application before Justice J.T. Soho, Babalakin is asking the court for an order restraining EFCC and the Attorney General of the Federation from taking any steps to arraign or proceed with the arraignment or trial of the applicant on the same or similar charge under the same or similar law or similar subject matter, which charge ID number 239-C-2012 stroke stroke was instituted by the respondent and quashed by the High Court of Lagos State pending the hearing and determination of the application. When the application came up for consideration, EFCC counsel Rotimi Jacobs, SEN, noted that the prosecution was not served with the notice. The court consequently adjourned till May 25, 2015 for hearing. Legal experts have said that the EFCC is on course to file fresh charges against Babalakin 
since Justice Lawala Kapo merely struck out the earlier charges against him on technical grounds. Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> I got a telephone call. Anytime I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Jehovah Magadam. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey! Was you owe contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs. On pipe on water. I right. embezzled the money at the fear chief. You are supposed to fear fear for you. A special man that you don't do of EMCC. I chose people who are doing the rule to chop other people with money. EMCC. As soon as they captured them. Threat to prison. Right? Yeah. Jail. Jail. Ah! Are you there? Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. When other people are dead, die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EMCC, I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has arraigned the duo of Mohamed Yao Gital and Sani Abba, both senior officials of the Ministry of the Federal Capital Territory, before Justice O.C. Akpaza of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory on a four-count charge bordering on criminal breach of trust, obtaining by false pretense and abuse of office. Gittel, a former chief of staff to the FCT minister Bala Muhammad, and Abba, a deputy director, mass housing at the Federal Capital Development Authority, FCDA, allegedly conspired and defrauded one Chief Duru Mike Ejiogu, managing director, Visioni and Strauss, Nigeria Limited, to the tune of 60 million naira, on the pretext that the said sum would be used to facilitate the change of land use in respect of plot number 523, cadastral zone, BOO, Kukwaba district from passive recreation to residential. One of the counts reads that you, Yahu Muhammad Gital, being the former chief of staff to the Honorable Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, and Saini Abba being the deputy director, Mass Housing, Federal Capital Development Authority, FCDA, and special assistant to the said chief of staff, sometime in March 2014 in Abuja, within the jurisdiction of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, with intent to defraud conspired to do an illegal act to wit, obtain the sum of 30 million naira from Chief Duru Mike Ejiogu, managing director of Visioni and Strauss, Nigeria Limited, under false pretense that the said amount was to facilitate the change of land use in respect of plot number 523, cadastral zone BOO, Kukwaba district, file number MISC 52843, from passive recreation to residential housing estate and thereby committed an offence, contrary to Section 8A of the Advanced Fee Fraud and Other Fraud-Related Offences Act 2006, and punishable under Section 1.3 of the same Act. The accused pleaded not guilty when the charges were read to them. In view of their pleas, the prosecution counsel, Silvanus Tahir, asked for a date for the commencement of trial. Justice Akpaza granted the accused bail in the sum of 50 million naira and one shirty each. The shorty, who must be a civil servant, not below grade level 12, must be resident in the Federal Capital Territory with evidence of home ownership. The case has been adjourned to June 4, 2015 for trial. <laughs>
The trial of a Lagos court registrar, Mrs. Rosulu Idowu Oluronke, accused of defrauding a former chief of army staff, General Ishaya Bameyi, of $300,000, continued before a Lagos State High Court sitting in Ikeda, with legal nominary Chief Afe Babalola SAN telling the court that he never offered any legal representation to Bameyi and could not have received payment to that effect by either Fred Adudwa or Oluronke. Thelma A.K. has the update on this. A prosecution witness from Afe Babalola's chamber, Adebayo Olanik Bekun S.A.N., told the court presided over by Justice Lawal Akapo that the law firm never took a brief from General Bamiyi and did not receive any money from Ajudwa. He said, Fred Ajudwa did not brief our firm to represent him at any time and we did not receive any money from Fred Ajudwa in respect of General Ishaya Bamiyi. We did not represent General Bamiyi and we did not receive any money from Fred Ajudwa. General Bamiyi had in his testimony before the court identified Oluronke as a woman who collected $330,000 for onward delivery to his supposed counsel, Afe Babalala S.A.N. Justice Lawala Kapo adjourned the matter till May 2015 for continuation of trial. It will be recalled that Ajudwa and the defendant were initially arraigned by EFCC before Justice Ikbae, but the second defendant, who is a public servant, requested for separation of the charges and expeditious trial. Oluronke, a former registrar to Justice Olubumi Oyewale, is facing a two-count charge of conspiracy to obtain money by false pretenses and obtaining money by false pretense. The EFCC alleged that she helped Ajudwa to funnel the money from Bamiyi between November 2004 and June 2005, while both of them were being remanded at Kirikiri Prison for separate offenses. EFCC said Ajudwa obtained the money from Bamiyi by claiming that it represented the professional fees charged by Chief Afe Babalola S.A.N. to handle his case. Thelma A.K. reporting for The Eagle. Advanced fee fraud is an act of criminality which occurs when a fraudster targets his or her victims to make an advance payment for certain unmerited financial gains. It could take the form of someone asking for advance payments of goods, services and some other financial gains. Aisha Gambari in this special report takes a look at the Commission's effort in tackling this genre of fraud. This report contains disturbing pictures, viewer discretion is advised the report there are several types of advanced fee fraud they include career opportunity scams clairvoyance or psychic scams check overpayment fraud dating or romance scams fraud recovery fraud and identity theft others are inheritance fraud loan scams lottery and sweepstakes scams whatever form it takes the ultimate motive of the scammer is to obtain benefits from his victim by making seemingly irresistible propositions to him. Clairvoyance or psychic scams is one form of advance fee fraud known as wash wash in the Nigerian parlance. When total strangers approaches you with stories that they have seen something wonderful or terrible about your future, you may not need any other to tell till that you have been lined up to be fleeced. The tales deployed as baits for victims are many. Some claim to possess powers that can heal or provide remedy to certain ailments. They may also tell you that you are in some kind of trouble, but a solution is within reach. They could demand for a fee to remove a curse or a spell. Some even go as far as telling you that they can produce currency notes or that they have some marked notes somewhere and they need money to buy chemicals to wash it. A demo operation is carried out in which the mugu, as they call their victim, is taken through a motion of paper being washed to become a hard currency, often the US dollars. The process usually ends with the victim being told to help source for some money to purchase the expensive chemical for a cut of the deal. This form of scam is common in Nigeria, with many victims losing lifetime investments to fraudsters. Section 2 of the Advanced Fee Fraud and Other Fraud Related Offenses Act 2006 states that a person who with intent to defraud, represent himself as possessing the power or as capable of doubling or otherwise increasing any sum of money through scientific or any other medium of invocation of any juju or other invincible entity of anything whatsoever commits an offense and is liable on conviction 
to imprisonment for a term not more than 15 years and not less than 5 years without the option of a fine. Armed with this, the Commission has been unrelenting in its efforts to check the activities of the scammers. Raids were carried out on their hideouts, mostly shrines in remote villages and towns where they construct makeshift shrines decorated with gory objects to scare or convince their victims. One of such raids took place in Ikorodu, a suburb of Lagos. Operators of the commission stormed the village inhabited by predominantly cassava farmers. The atmosphere appeared calm with a natural ambience, but that was the perfect disguise that attracted the scammers to the village. This shrine belongs to one Elentu Akwetutu, a 35 years old alleged fake herbal healer. He was alleged to have constructed the makeshift shrine and advertises his power to heal all kinds of ailments. His fame began to spread, attracting clients from far and near. Akwetutu started defrauding his victims by demanding for large sums of money and handing them fake herbal concussions. He, however, met his Waterloo when one of his victims, who lost a fortune to him, decided to report to the EFCC. The victim, who is a staff of a new generation bank in Lagos, alleged that she met Akwetutu through her driver when she was seeking for alternative medicine therapy for her sick daughter. The driver, who hails from the same community with Akwetutu, took her and the daughter to Ikorodu where she met Akwetutu. She was asked to pay a certain amount of money as deposit for him to commence processing herbs for her daughter. The victim also told the commission via a petition that the sum of 75,000 naira was deposited with him. She was asked to come back for the herbs next day, which she did. After collecting the herbs, Akwetutu called her to bring more money in order for him to prepare more herbs for her daughter, which she did. The demand for more money continued. After several months of treatment with no improvement in her daughter's health, the victim approached Akwetutu again to complain but was asked to bring more money. She said she had to sell some of her properties in order to meet up with his demands. Having exhausted her resources, she approached a friend for a loan. It was after listening to a narration about her dealings with Akwetutu that the friend suspected that she has been scammed and advised her to report to the commission. The commission immediately swung into action by raiding the village. Upon sighting the victim in company of armed personnel, Akpetutu immediately ran into hiding. A search began for him and he was eventually discovered inside the forest. Come. He was then brought back to the shrine and the discovery was quite gory. FCC will get you anywhere, anytime. A search was conducted round the shrine and a big statue which the victim claimed spoke to her was discovered. The statue was located inside an inner room which had a back door which served as an entry and exit point for Akwetutu's accomplice who talks through the effigy to convince their victims. Better from the other side. No, no, no. We will pack all those things now. Where are we going to? Let them open this thing. I hear somebody they say talk. Mm -hmm. They do win, win. We'll pack all the things where they're the shrine. 
Try. Many villagers watched with relief while Akwetutu was arrested and taken away. Some of them who spoke off camera said they have watched helplessly as Akwetutu terrorizes the villagers. They said he's not a native of their town and having discovered his nefarious act, all efforts to evict him proved abortive. Akwetutu was arrested and taken to the EFCC Lagos Zonal Office where his tools of the trade were exhibited. And with that, we have come to the end of this week's episode of the program. Please keep a date with us, same time, same station, for another fresh package next week. To be part of this program, please send your comments and contributions to info at efccnigeria.org or search for us on Google Plus at official efcc or official efccng at gmail.com. You can also like our page on facebook.com forward slash official efcc or follow us on Twitter at official efcc. And to watch our programs and other activities, please log on to youtube.com forward slash official efcc. My name is Aisha Mohammed. Goodbye and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>